Here's an MG radiator shell that we've had in. It's got more problems than it looks at first glance. It doesn't look too bad in the video, but it is actually in far worse condition. There's quite a lot of metalwork damage and things that aren't really straight on it. It's going to need more metalwork repair than you would imagine. As usual, the first job is to book it in. We photograph it. And that gets printed out to go round the workshop with the job. Now before we can do any polishing work or preparation work, we've got to get it back to bare metal. So we're going to strip the plating off. To do that we've got to wire it up on copper wires and it's going in a tank where we're going to reverse the plating process and take the plating off. As this is made of brass, all it needs is a swill and it's done. Now we're in the polishing shop. This is where the bulk of the preparation work is. So this first operation is what we call cutting out. And what we're trying to do is remove all of the scratches, marks, corrosion that it's picked up over the years to give us an even finish. If you like our videos, please hit the button and give us a like. It really does help with getting our videos seen. And if you'd like to subscribe and hit the notification bell, you'll be informed when we release new videos. It's really important that as we're working towards edges that we've got to be really careful not to catch them. changing to a different type of abrasive wheel. This is a soft mop that's been dressed up with abrasives and it's more gentle than using a linishing head and an abrasive belt. So this is where we're going to go around and get the slightly more delicate areas. And also because these are soft and flexible you can get them to go into recesses like into that little bead that runs around the edge of this radiator shell. If you tried to get in there with a linishing head then the chances are you'd polish through the edge of the bead. switch into a really small tool 
this is so that we can get into those awkward areas like into that inside edge and into those corners you can't do this with a big tool because you would end up wrapping the radiator shell around the spindle and destroying it Now it's time to mark up all the areas of repair that need doing. It's quite difficult to see in the video, but there's lots of areas where he's scribbling in broad areas, it's because there's lots of ripples that need sorting out. There's a dent there, more dents. And there we go ready to go off to be repaired. Before we can do the repairs, the first thing that's got to happen is these studs have got to come off from the back of the radiator shell. Our customers provided a new set of vanes, because the vanes on this rad shell are painted, Later on we'll refit these before we start plating it. All of these studs are just soft soldered on so we can drop them off quite easily with a little bit of heat. There is marking the positions of where the studs need to go back. Now it's time for the hammers to come out to start reshaping some of the dented areas. It's not easy to see in the video but there is quite a lot of misshapen areas that need to be teased back into shape. I always find it fascinating watching this work being carried out and the way how he gets the metal to flow in the direction that he wants it to. He makes it look really easy but having tried it, it really isn't as easy as it looks. There's always continual checking to see the progress of how it's shaping up.
Now all the hammering's done, he's going to prepare the lower area of the grill because this is too thin and he can't do any more work to it. If he carries on, it's probably going to start cracking up. So what's happening here is he's just keying the area so that he can apply some lead. Lead is the last resort, but sometimes that's what you've got to do to get the job done. Now it's just a final clean up and then difficult to reach areas with a small tool. Now we're back into the repair. Now we've got to coat this in a special tinning paste so that we can prepare it ready so that it will accept from lead. With this tinning paste what you have to do is heat it up until it goes shiny and then wipe it off with a cloth and it leaves a silvery deposit on top of the job and then onto that you can apply the lead and it will stick properly. There we go, perfect. Now it's time to mount some lead onto the surface. And after some lead on, then you can start spreading it around. The temperature's got to be kept exactly right to enable it to be liquid, but not so liquid that it will run off. What's being used to spread it out is just a shaped piece of wood. There you can see it's starting to get smoother as he works the lead. What's being used to lubricate it is some tallow grease. Now that the leading is finished, it's time to degrease it so that it can be filed to take any lumps and bumps of it. Obviously the smoother you get the lead, the less filing you've got to do. The final bit is to go over it with a DA sander just to make it nice and smooth ready for the polisher to carry on with his work.
Now we're back in the polishing shop and it's time to go over it again with the DA just to make sure that we remove any last little marks and just to make sure that everything's right before we start heading into the copper plating process. Now to prevent those studs that were fitted earlier from building up we're going to apply some heat shrink tubing over them. Just a, a little bit of heat from a blowtorch and that's all we need. We found that this is the best stuff to use for masking off because it's quick, it's cheap and it doesn't tend to fall off in the tank. There we go, all done, ready for copper placing. Now we're into the first bit of electro plating. So this first time we're going to copper it. Now we use the copper in the same way that you might use a high build primer in paint. It's to put a thickness on, it's to help cover up marks and it gives us something that we can work with to do more polishing. If we don't put some metal back on this, we're not going to be able to do any more polishing because it's too thin. Once we're wired up onto copper wires, it's into the soapy cleaner. Time to put the gloves on. And then the next thing is we've just got to make sure that it's super clean just to make sure that there's no polishing grease compounds anything we just need to get it super clean because any dirt at all at this stage is going to damage the finish that we put on Now the next tank that this goes into is an electric cleaner. Now what we do with this is we pass an electric current through it and it blasts any oxides off of the surface of the metal. This leaves it super clean and in what we call an active state. When it's had the oxides taken off, the metal surface is active, so it will accept the plating. If we don't do this, it will plate, but it won't bond properly, and that way the plating will peel off at a later date. Now, we're going through a rinse system here it's what's called a counterflow rinse system so the fresh water comes in and it goes through different weirs into different tanks and we rinse from the dirtiest water to the cleanest this tank here is actually a dilute sulfuric acid and that's just to make sure that any cleaning solution from the cleaner has been rinsed off because if we don't rinse that solution off we will get stains in the plated deposit. Now here we're going into a cyanide based copper solution. It's not going to be in here for very long, just a few minutes. We'll know when it's done because it will have the right 
colour, which should be a nice salmon pink colour. Now we've got to go back through that rinsing system and do exactly the same again. Plating really is about cleanliness. We've got to get all of this metal work super clean. And now we're just about ready to go from this dilute sulfuric acid into the copper. Now this copper is an acid based copper and this is what you would call a high build copper. So it goes in here and to put a decent thickness on it's going to be in here for a few hours. So with the magic of video editing here it is ready to come out Now we're back in the polishing shop and we've got to go all over this rad shell again just to make sure that we remove and get rid of any repair marks that are left and also just to knock the surface back so that we can give it another coppering. When something's in a condition as bad as this was then quite often it will need more than one coppering especially when it's got really thin areas where there's not enough metal for us to really work and make a nice job of it. So what we're doing is we're using the copper to build the metal up so that we can actually continue working with it. So it's just a case of methodically going over everything, getting out as many marks as you possibly can. As you can see it's quite laborious and skilled because if you start going through to the lead underneath it just creates a problem and means you've got to plate it in the copper again. But steadily working his way around. You can see some of them marks there that are being taken out, some, some pits. So we're trying to get to the bottom of these without going through. You can see there's still some file marks there. Now he's gently going to use an abrasive belt because that's a quicker way to cut it out. Now the reason he's gone with a DA sander at the bottom is because where these leaded areas are you really don't want to put any heat into it because if you start getting it hot then you're going to actually start to bubble the lead up and then it will all blister and it will be a nightmare and you've got to cut it back to the brass and start again. Notice how with the initial polishing he's still avoiding those edges which will neaten up later.
you can see how much quicker using a linishing bow is than doing it with the DA or by hand. Now getting near that leaded area again, back to a DA, because we've just got to tickle this and do it really gently. making use of the smaller tools to go into the inside edges now it's time to bring out another one of those sateen dressed mops so these have got a greaseless abrasive put onto a soft mop and we can get this to run into the little recesses and because it's flexible down into the bead we've got to make sure that we cover all of the areas because if we miss that little bit out when it goes in the placing again there is a chance that it would peel in there at a later date that's why it's imperative we clean up all the surfaces And there we go, ready for the next process. Now we're into the plating shop again for another coat of copper on this grill to give us a bit more metal to work with again. If you like what we do, please give us a thumbs up and hit the subscription button. And if you hit the bell, you'll be informed when we release new videos. Into the soapy cleaner tank. time for the gloves to go on and then it's wiping it all down in the soapy cleaner to make sure that it's perfectly clean once again let's give that a rinse off and into the electric cleaner same as before we've got to pass a current through this get rid of the oxides from the surface and leave it in an active state so that it will accept the plating and it will bond to the surface properly. Through the rinse system, so going from the dirtiest water into cleaner water and then into the clean tank as the water comes in a rinse through the dilute sulfuric acid to remove any soap residue and now we're into the acid copper for a few hours again and out we come and there it is ready to go back into the polishing shop Now 
Now we're back in the polishing shop for the final time. So we're going to go over this with very fine abrasive. This will be something like a 600 where we're just going over it just to make sure that there's nothing on there that will drag up when we go over it with a mop. been gone over to the areas we can get to with the linishing belt it's time to move on to the DA and go over the more slightly awkward areas This radiator shell will be free from all those dents though, so the customer can fit it knowing that it's dead right. Just gently teasing out any tiny little marks there you can see. Now we're going it over it with a very fine thousand grit grade. Because of that lead, that's in this grill, we've got to do as much as we possibly can with the brazes before we get to the brushing and mopping stage because we cannot put any heat into the grill. So we've got to go very gently and take our time. So this is a thousand grit so it should make it a lot easier to mop when we get to that stage. Now we've got a small little tool and we're going to start mopping the awkward to get to bits like that centre vein and the inside edge. You can see how it's polishing up quite easily because we've gone over it and got all the marks out and left it on a very fine grade. Now we're putting a brush on, this is a sizal brush, and we're gently going to go over it. You'll start to see the shine appear now, just working it gently, not getting heat into it. Now the key with all these polishing compounds is to apply them little and often. So got to work our way all around this radiator shell. Once that's done we can go on to a mop, so that's a soft mop. clean pair of white cotton gloves going on for this final stage. This final stage is what we call colouring up and it gives it that final polish so that we can see that it's dead right. Now 
you can see the quality of the finish we've got to get before we can do the final plating. Time for a final inspection before it's ready to go into the plating shop. This is the final time now in the plating shop. So the same procedure as before, into the soapy cleaner, gloves on, let's give it a clean, make sure it's perfectly clean with the cloth. from the soapy cleaner into the electric cleaner passing a current through it there it is fizzing away blasting those oxides from the surface into the rinse system from dirty water again into cleaner water and finally into clean water the dilute sulfuric final rinse in the clean water and now we're going into the nickel tank. Now the nickel is where all the good looks and the weather protection on the final chrome is achieved. It's this part that makes it look good. Nice bit of slow-mo, see the bubbles in the tank. And now we're ready to come out. It's getting a rinse in the clean water and then it's going to go into the chrome tank. Now the chrome is just a very thin layer that's put on top of the nickel and it stops the nickel from tarnishing. It changes the colour but it basically is just to stop it tarnishing so you don't have to polish it. We'd really appreciate it if you can hit the thumbs up button to give us a like it really does help our videos to be seen also if you subscribe and hit the notification bell you'll be told when we release a new video so the chrome gets rinsed off through a solution to neutralize the chromic acid And there it is finished, ready to be hung up. So. Now the water's dried from the radiator shell, we can take it off the wires, give it a wipe over and inspect it.
So carefully off the wire. Let's put some cleaner on it. This is just so that you can wipe any finger marks, water marks off it that are there. Now it's been inspected we can see that it's ready for the customer and he's dead right ready to be put back on his car. Here's a few close-up shots And it's ready for the customer.